Hello, good morning. I hope that everybody is well. It's been um, a really lovely week uh, for me personally and for Hands Across the Sea Samplers. I'll talk about personal life a little bit later, but let's start with the new release that we had this week. And it is Emily Ann Foster, Weaverthorpe, and Emily stitched her sampler in Weaverthorpe, aged 11, in 1892. And this is a darling little sampler. Um, I love the name Weaverthorpe. It rolls off the tongue so nicely. And I particularly loved um, this bottom section, which made um, Emily's primer just that little bit more interesting. I also love the words, God is love. I think that is something that is very endearing that she stitched on her sampler. And I loved how she used a slightly different color for God is love and this little uh, row above. I think that um, if you have faith in God, it carries you a long way um, in times of um, hardship or uncertainty. Very, very pretty little sampler. Now, we know that um, Emily was born in Duggleby Warren in North Yorkshire, and um, she was, let me just find it. Um, she was born in 1881, and she was uh, the daughter of George Foster and Hannah Summersgill. Um, we find her in the 1901 census and the 1911 census. Her father was a farm bailiff, so he was in charge of a farm. And Emily um, would have worked on the farm or in the house. And I'm sure that life in North Yorkshire in the 1900s on a farm uh, wasn't an easy ride. Everybody had to work hard and, and pull together to uh, get a living out of the land. Um, I would like to think that Emily's little sampler brought her comfort in her life. Um, Emily's sampler brought me a lot of comfort in a very difficult time for me. I'm sure that if you follow my floss tubes, you remember when Hugo, um, you know, there was doubts about his heart and I was worrying and starting to spiral. And I stitched um, this little sampler. Now this sampler is the top half of Emily's sampler. And that just goes to show that you don't have to stitch an entire sampler. You can just stitch a section of a sampler and you can frame it up and it can stand in its own right. Um, you can have fun with samplers, you know, make them your own and take the little girl's work and make something of it. That's what these little girls did um, in their classroom under their needlework teacher's guidance. Um, now, Emily, um, we can find no record of a marriage or a death. So we don't know what happened to her. Um, she's another one on my list for the 1921 census to see if we can pick her back up. But, you know, it's still nice to have found the girl. And the reason that we were able to find her was the fact that she recorded Weaverthorpe and her age and the year on her sampler. Um, you know, we could go straight to her in-family history records. Emily stitched a sampler with two shades of colour. You will only need one skein or one spool, whether you're stitching on 14 count Ada, 28 count linen, or 56 count linen. Um, it's cross stitch over two threads so you can stitch her on Ada, Lin Ada or Ada. She's a little gem, she's available for instant PDF download from our website and selected stores around the world. She's a very quick stitch, you know, um, 
this little sampler, you could stitch this over a long weekend very, very easily. And a sampler of this size, you know, you don't have to frame it. You could finish this in lots of different ways, you know, making it into um, a small. Her stitch count is only 119, 119 stitches by um, 128 stitches. So if you were going to stitch her on 14 count Ada, 28 count linen, she would be 8.5 by 9.14. If you stitched her on 28 count Ada, that's 40 count linen, she would be 5.95 by 6.40. I stitched Emily using um, a Vera Soir 103 and I stitched her on um, marbled pointer uh, which is an over dyed uh, linen by Ducas of X Ju Designs and that's on Etsy you'll find Ducas's linen. Now when I came to stitch the smaller version um, I enhanced the colours because she was smaller I wanted to use colour to give her a little bit more oomph so that she had more impact. So I went for a slightly deeper red and um, a slightly um, enhanced variation on these sort of shell pink tones for God is love and for the little border above. It's more noticeable on this one than on the true reproduction. But I did that for a purpose. Um, this one I stitched in soir Safine uh, rather than uh, soir 103. It's really important that when you are um, stitching uh, that you use the right thickness of thread for the count of linen that you are working on. Um, 103 sits beautifully on 56 count when you're stitching over two, but when you're stitching over one on 56 count, you need something finer again, and the Soir Safine gives you that. And that's one of the beautiful things um, about the Overa Soir's range, that you can pick the same colors in uh, Safine, the 103, and what I should have done, I was slow, I should have brought out a skein of Soir d'Alger to show how, you know, you can work through the different thicknesses of threads and maintain the same colour. Now, um, many of you have been emailing me, I was going to say bombarding me with, new, with emails, but I don't mind receiving lots of emails. I've been having lots of emails saying, that you're very anxious about stitching um, Anna and Ellen Wilkinson. Now, this sampler is all cross stitch, but there's a lot of over one stitching on this sampler. So we're going to be using um, the um, Soir 103 and the Soir Safine to do this sampler. And as you can see, this is a fabulous match for the red that, well, Hannah chose and Ellen continued with on this sampler. We're going to be using um, Marble Pointer again from Ducas of X Ju Designs. And um, we, this is Marble Pointer. Now, I'm not going to stitch this one. I was going to, but I'm not now. Boomer, um, who's a dear friend, and she has been a model stitcher from when we first started Hands Across the Sea Samplers, is going to stitch Hannah and Ellen. Boomer really loves red samplers. And Boomer's chosen to stitch Hannah and Helen on 46 count. Now, all my 46 count um, is out being stitched on at the moment, so I can't actually show you that. Um, so this is the 56 count. And on um, 46 count, it's going to be a little bit of a deeper colour, but it will be a really lovely, lovely match for um, this sampler when it's just that tad deeper. Um, 56 count 
always dyes much lighter than 46 count. So for everybody who's anxious about Helen and Hannah and Ellen, uh, Boomer will be starting this as soon as the supplies arrive with her. And Boomer's a very, very quick stitcher. And we are conscious that you're anxious to stitch her. So, you know, we're on it. Um, talking of um, 103, I've um, had an email asking me um, about, where's, oh my glasses are on my head, um, about 103 and about the spools. Now these little spools have these little flick tops but these tops aren't really designed to pop right up. If you mishandle these or a little bit rough with them these will come off and they will not go back on, you will break them. These little spool tops are designed for you to catch your thread in. So um, when I uh, want to get my thread in and out, I just use my fingernail to just pop that up slightly. So if I'm going to put this back in, I'll just take my fingernail and run it through the uh, spool top and that secures it because there is nothing worse than putting that in um, a box of spools without that little thread secured because when, when you start rummaging in that box, and I do a lot of rummaging in my spool boxes, you will get a tangle of loose ends and that's why these little tops flick up and down. But um, I'm going to do that, no, I'm not going to do that end because that's got the number on in case it does come off. So, um, you know, you can flick them up like that, but you don't want to do it any further than necessary. So that's uh, about the spool tops on 103. Um, this week I've had quite a few questions in and um, one of them was about the tops of the 103. I've also been asked about storing linen and floss. Well, with linen, um, you don't want to store it where it's going to be in the sunlight because the sunlight will bleach your linen. And I don't know if you've ever um, picked up an item in a store that may have been displayed in a shop window, but when you pick it up, you often get bleach lines where the item was folded and in the sun and that's one thing you do not want with your linen you don't want it to get bleached overall or get bleached with a fold line in it so always store it out of the light um i've got um i said you know we, we all start off in different ways but how i've ended up at the moment with storing my linen um in this country you can buy big clear plastic um, cases or bags and um, they're designed to store um, clothes and duvets and pillows and you put um, a hoover on the uh, on these things and you suck the air out and it squashes them right down. Now I don't do that but the bags themselves are ideal for uh, storing linen in because when I get them out of the cupboard, I can see through the clear bags what's in there and how I've started to divide my linens up by count. So I'll have one bag for a certain count, another bag for a different count. Um, it's very, very important that when you store your linen, you make sure the linen is labelled. It is so easy to say, oh, I'll remember what that is. But over time you will forget. I'm sure there's many of us that have mystery pieces of linen in our stash. Um, this little sampler, um, this linen is from um, Foxglove and Lace and Hazel sells her linen on Instagram. Now I showed you this piece of linen last week and um, since I showed it to you I have um, stitched this, I've finished this sampler. Very very pretty sampler and what I liked was that um, Hazel had these really lovely super tags on that are actually 
pinned to your piece of linen and because it's firmly attached I can't make a mistake then uh, or it, the label doesn't come off when it's stored. Um, I had a few emails about um, vintage linen saying oh my gosh you know that's very um, dramatic and yes it does look dramatic but once you've stitched on it Look how lovely that looks. You know, when you stitch on it, it takes away the starkness or the sort of, um, it's not in your face any longer, the vintage in it becomes much more subtle and that becomes very effective. When that is framed, that will look even more beautiful again. I really love stitching this little sampler. It was very, very sweet. Very sweet. I loved her use of colour. Very, very nice. Um, so, going back to linen, tag your linen so that you know what it is. Um, I do have within the um, big bag with the cant another bag where I might have my lakeside linen and I might have um, my ex due design linen, my week's linen, uh, because then. When I open the big bag up, um, I haven't got to go through everything. I can think my after a lakeside linen, that's my lakeside bag in that count. Um, sometimes when I'm having a rummage, my um, room where I store my linen becomes an absolute mess when I'm pulling things out, trying to match things um, against a sampler. But um, I try my best to be organized it's a really strange thing. Um, it doesn't matter how much linen you have in your stash. You never have the right colour in the right count for the project you want to work on. Um, you know, it's just one of those things. Um, I'm just going to leave the questions I was asked because we sort of started to talk about linen. Last week when I showed the linen from Foxglove and Lace, no, no not Foxglove and Lace, sorry, uh, from um, X Duke's Designs, I had a batch of linen that um, I purchased with a gift certificate from a group of friends. And one of the colours I showed was grey sand. And if you recall, I said I had a project in mind for it. Well, this is the project. So this is what I've been stitching on this week. Now again, this vintaging is very sort of in your face on this linen, but as I start to stitch on this, it's going to be really, really effective, um, a, an effective backdrop for this design. Now, this little sampler, it's a crazy sampler, and I was so drawn to it when I saw it. It was... It could be nothing else than a child's painting, you know, a child's vivid imagination. Um, this sampler, um, it has so much in it. This little girl, she must have carried on doodling and doodling and doodling on her design until she could fit nothing else into it. Um, I'm starting off with this giant carnation, uh, and it is a giant carnation. It probably comes down to here by the time I finish stitching it, and this is the bottom of the sampler. Um, she had a fabulous eye for colour. Um, this is going to be a really, really vivid sampler when I finish it. Um, and I keep on thinking about Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Um, this little girl must have been on some sort of um, high when she designed it because it really is bonkers, absolutely bonkers. But that's what's endearing about it. It's a child's um, artwork, a child's imagination, a child's take on life. Um, okay, I'm sort of getting sidetracked here. Let's go back to... Um, the questions. Just put all this back so I know where I am. Can't wait to get that one framed. Um, okay, so next question was, um, whenever you show a work in progress, there seems to be so much more fabric 
the kneaded well. Um, this one I've started to um, stitch. Um, so what I tend to do is I'll chart a bit through the day and that gives me my stitching for the night. Um, so I don't know exactly how uh, much fabric I do need for that piece. Um, but I do like working with extra fabric anyway because I often like to do in the uh, margins. Plus, um, when I have excess fabric on a piece, it means that I can use, because um, this will be on my stand, I can use this surplus fabric to put my um, pattern as I'm working, but I tend to work off my phone. Um, so I would put my phone here and I would be looking from here to here. And one of the reasons I like doing that is because my eyes are not having to adjust. If my pattern was there, my eyes would be going from this distance to that distance. And when you're working on high count linen, um, obviously your eyes are very focused in and then having to focus back out, it always takes a little bit of time for your eyes to refocus. Whereas if my pattern, uh, whether it's a paper pattern or a digital pattern on my phone, is literally alongside the area I'm stitching, I'm not having to look up and down, I'm not having to refocus, it's just there. So that's one of the reasons what, why I like having an excess fabric. Also, um, if I'm working um, on a big piece of fabric that I'm hoping to get multiple designs out of, um, it saves me having to cut the fabric off. Um, in lockdown, the very first lockdown, I had one yard of linen and if you recall I stitched several samplers on that piece of linen before I actually cut it all up. Um, now this lady um, actually says as well um, about what I allow at the top. Well, hands across the sea samplers we suggest a three inch margin around your design area. Now, you don't need three inches to frame your piece of work, but I think three inches gives you a nice safety margin if you slightly miscount your, your left hand start. You've got that little bit extra on the right hand uh, to accommodate your misstart. Um, and um, three inches um, at the top gives you that little bit of um, leeway as well. Um, you know, if you miss uh, started at the top, when you get to the bottom, you've got that little bit extra in that three inch margin. Um, you don't need three inches to start your fabric on a millennium frame. Um, and somebody asked me, uh, or this lady asked me, why sometimes do you start way down? Well, if I'm using a piece of vintage linen, um, I may want to uh, get in um, a certain bit of vintage in, in an area of my sampler. Um, and I actually like this section of the... Um, of the uh, piece of linen the best. I just felt it was a nice um, scattering of uh, the vintage areas. If I had um, started here, it meant that in the unstitched piece of linen that would show when it's frayed, I would have this strong vintage in, and I didn't really want that. Um, I hope I made sense there. I probably didn't. My husband always tells me when I explain things, I go round the mulberry bush. Okay, so, um, this lady also asks, um, how do you work on fine linens such as 56 count? Well, um, you have to use the right magnification so that you can see 56 count. Um, I don't like working through a magnifier. I like having my glasses the right strength 
for the linen I'm working on. Now, these glasses are my reading glasses. I would probably be able to use these to embroider on maybe 36 count, but I have a slightly stronger pair for 40 count, a slightly stronger pair for 46 count, and a very strong pair for 56 count. And I've been stitching on 56 count now probably um, maybe about 16 months, 14, 16 months. And when I first started stitching on 56 count, my glasses were very strong. But I recently realized about two months ago that the strength of glasses I was using was probably too strong as my eyes have got used to it. So recently I have dropped down um, from 3.5 and I dropped down to 3.25 and I've recently dropped down to 3 for stitching on 56 count linen. Um, so um, for the lady who, who asked, you just need the magnification that works for you. You might find it's fine to work through a magnifier, but because of my back and my neck injury, I find it very, very difficult to be working through a magnifier. It's much better for me that my magnification is on my face and I don't have to put my neck in a certain position. Um, I'm lucky that my eyes, both my eyes need the same prescription so I can just buy readers. If your eyes are different prescriptions, then you need to go to your um, opticians and say that you want glasses for a specific purpose and then your optician can, um, you know, put you up a pair of glasses that will work for the count that you want to work on at the distance that you want to work on. Um, she asked, how do I hold my pattern? Well, I've answered that on the side of my fabric. If I'm traveling and um, I am using a hoop, I tend to have um, my pattern printed out on a piece of paper and I tend to fold it up and hold it on my fabric so again my eyes are going from my stitching to my pattern at the same distance so I'm not having to keep on refocusing. Um, 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 um. That's fine, um, so that was those questions. Um, another interesting question that I've been asked this week um, was about the long and the short S. Now, um, in the samplers, we often see words that are strange. Um, for example, um, if you saw um, the word cross, you might see cross as C-R-O-F-S. Well, that isn't a spelling mistake. In the 1700s, and 1800s and sometimes into the early 1900s the F was actually a long S and um, in the English language we had the long S and the short S and there are specific rules of when the long and the short S is used and you know I could read all of this out but it'd be much better if you're interested that you Google the rules for the long S in English. And, you know, basically, um, the short S is used at the end of the word. So if you had um, the word success, you would have a long F at the beginning, and then for the double S at the end, you would have a long F, and a short S. Um, the short S is used before the letter F. So if you had the word um, satisfaction, it would start with the long S, then it'd be the long S, A-T-I, short S, long F. Um, so there's lots of different rules about it. So 
Go on to Google and Google the rules for the long and short S. So in a sampler, when you see an F, where you would expect to see an S, it's not a mistake. Um, what else have I got? Oh, I know the other question I was asked about was the stretcher bars for the Millennium Frame. Now, the bars, the, the side stretchers come in three lengths. The short, the medium, and the long. Um, and you can see from my long that they are a lot lighter, and that's because they haven't had very much use. These um, products, they darken through age. Um, you know, from, from use, from the, the oils in your hand, the wood starts to get a patina. So you can immediately tell these have had more use than that. Um, with very long ones, you will have a big area of your work on display. And for some embroiderers, that is important. Um, you know, you may not want to roll your work. For example, if you were doing gold work, um, you might not want to roll your work, so you would want a big area open. Um, the medium ones, um, I have used um, a fair bit. The short ones are my go-to, um, and I might use these a couple of times throughout the year. Um, maybe if I'm working on a reproduction and I want to see how colours are working on the overall design, so I might want a bigger area on display. Or I've used these when I've been doing pulled work, when I've not wanted to roll uh, my work. But my go-to um, side stretchers are these. Um, it's a nice amount of fabric to have open. And what you have to remember is the bigger the area you're working on, the more you're leaning over and having to reach to embroider. It's nice to have your work at this uh, position rather than that position. Um, so if you're picking side stretchers, I can't advise you what you should get. I can tell you um, that I find working uh, on the shortest ones, the easiest ones, because um, the bigger your frame, the more cumbersome it is, the more space it takes up. But predominantly for me, it's because of the position I want to sit in when I stitch. And I don't want to be working up here. I want to be working here. And that's what the short ones give me. But it's what suits you. Now, I'm always getting asked, what size bars should I order? Well, the size bars that you order have to suit what you stitch on. If you only stitch on small product, uh, projects, you would not want 36 inch bars because you would have this big setup that's taking up lots and lots of room where you're only working on a small section. If you always work on big projects, you wouldn't want a short set of, uh, or a narrow set of bars. You have to decide what you stitch on. When I first bought um, the Millennium Frame, I was working on big projects at the time. And, um, you know, I'd spent a lot of money on frames over the years, and none of them ever did what they said they were going to do. None of them ever provided me with attention. So when I ordered the Millennium Frame, I went for the 36-inch one, which was the biggest one, because that suited what I was working on at the time. Um, and I realised that if I wanted to work on something smaller, I could put a, a narrower piece of fabric on the 36-inch bars. When it came and I realised how fabulous the Millennium Frame was, that it did provide me with absolute drum tight tension, I realised it was the frame for me. So I then ordered the stand and bit by bit over the years, using birthday and Christmas money, I've bought most of the different sizes. Now, as you can see, you know, that, even on the edge, is really, really lovely, and I like working on good drum-tight tension. Um, so, 
over the years I've bought various ones and I, I may have them all. I don't think I have got all the sizes, but I've got the sizes that I want. Um, so I could tell you what I like working on, but what you work on has to be your decision. If you can only afford one uh, set of bars, pick the widest ones for the type of projects that you work on. If you could afford several pairs, pick maybe um, a small, a medium and longest length. The shortest, the medium and the longest with the bars. And then you've got maybe three that you can choose to work on. Remembering you can never put a piece of fabric on that's wider than the size of your bars. But in theory, on the 36 inch bar, you could put a, a, like a three inch piece of banding on and work on it if you want. Now, with Millennium Frames and the stands, you will always, always have a wait time for your product. Um, this is a very, very small company that hand makes things. It's not a production line. They don't get churned out. I rang at Needle Needs at the beginning of this week on behalf of a friend to check where she was in the wait list for her stand. And John told me that the other week they had 1,500 items ordered in one week. That is, you know, months of work for them probably. When you are ordering handmade uh, products, you know, you are in a queue for those products being made. I don't represent needle needs in any way. I am just a satisfied customer. Um, so, you know, there are wait times I'm, you know, I'm very happy to make phone calls for people to find out where they are in the queue, but I can't hurry up your order. Um, needle needs is nothing to do with me whatsoever. I am just a satisfied customer. The best things in life are worth waiting for, and one of the reasons you have to wait for the Millennium Frame and Stand is because they are so popular, um, and you know. If you look after them properly, they should last you a lifetime as well, because they are so well made. Um, so I think that answers the questions that I was asked about the Millennium Frame and Stand. Um, oh, the postman. The postman brought me a fabulous gift this week. I love my postman. Um, he, he delivers bills to my husband's and presents to me. A very dear friend um, saw this and thought of me and she ordered it. Um, it is a um, bee themed uh, scissor stand and uh, scissor fob. It's just absolutely adorable um, and my friend knows how thrilled I am to receive this and it's something that I will treasure. Um, it's from Danielle on Etsy and her products are fabulous. They're so well made. I love this. Oh, I love anything to do with bees. You know, my husband always calls me busy bee. Um, this is made, uh, as I said, by Danielle. And um, the other week I showed you this product um, that was made by Danielle as well. So, um, these sit very, very nicely on my sewing um, table. These colours on here uh, are some of the colours that have been used on um, my current model. Um, there are a lot more colours in that piece. The little girl had a wonderful paint box um, to choose from when she was designing that song. Um, Okay, I'm not sure how long this video has gone on for, um, but um, I think that's probably everything. Oh, I wanted to show you this piece. I stitched this piece back in 2009 and um, 
This was uh, stitched on Ada. I can't remember what count of Ada that it was stitched on, but I love this sample so, so much. And this hangs very, very proudly on my sampler wall. Although now on my stitching journey, I stitch on linen and um, I stitch on high count linen, I love this piece just as much as I love this piece just as much as my later work. Um, this piece brings back such dear memories um, of 2009 and what was happening in my life at that time. Needlework will always be treasured by me, whether it's needlework that I've stitched or needlework that you stitch or a little girl stitched hundreds of years ago. I was starting to get a little bit down. Um, my vaccination has, um, I feel as if I'm walking on air at the moment, um, having had my vaccination. Like, it's not three weeks yet, so I'm probably not, um, I haven't got my antibodies yet, but I just feel it's a really positive step to getting back to normal. Now, we rang our travel agents about um, booking a cruise for next year because we felt that um, if we had something booked, it was something to look forward to. But our travel agent said, I don't think you ought to be booking cruises at the moment for next year, because next year is still the unknown. So um, I was a little bit disheartened about that. But this week, um, I have booked um, uh, for two little trips. And um, in May, when the hotels open in this country, um, We've got two stages, self-catering accommodation opens April the 12th, so we open our cottages here April 12th, but hotels open on May 17th. So on May 23rd, I'm going up to London uh, to spend uh, a couple of days um, in London, meeting up with a dear friend. We're going to go to the V&A, um, if the V&A is back open, and we're going to see the handbag exhibition and we're going to have a little bit of retail therapy. I haven't been in a store other than a supermarket, a chemist, a pharmacy or a pet food store for 14 months so I think I deserve a little bit of retail therapy. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then um, my friend Elizabeth, um, Elizabeth and I, um, we normally do spa weekends throughout the year. And um, in between lockdowns last year, we did a walking holiday and we enjoyed it so much, we booked another one, but it got canceled because of this lockdown. So we went to book, um, rebook the hotel for the end of June to have a couple of days walking and we were so shocked the price of the room had doubled so we decided that we weren't going to stay um, where we went last time so Elizabeth who is always in charge of travel arrangements found um, another place on the Cornwall Devon border we like to meet up about halfway and um, we're going to have a couple of days walking. I've already found some walks in the area that we've booked. And um, the hotel we've booked is like an old country inn. And it's a fishing and shooting um, inn, so dogs are allowed. So um, I think possibly taking both the dogs um, somewhere I haven't been before might be a little bit too much because they're both very, very big dogs. So I think I'm probably going to take Hugo um, to give him an experience of staying in a hotel. We shall see. It's a little way off. We'll see how we go. Um, so those are really, really nice things to look forward to, you know, to keep my spirits up. I hope that you have things to look forward to as well. Um, friends are so important. Um, friends are your chosen family and I'm so blessed to have some wonderful friends in my life. Um, I've been having um, 
some sort of like video stitchings and video sort of uh, get togethers with friends. I had a lovely one with a dear friend in America on Friday. And do you know what? It's wonderful, but it's all free of charge through Facebook Messenger and Zoom. And you know, hours just fly by when you're talking. And this morning I was talking to um, one of my dear friends in France and you know, uh, she's a designer as well, a needleworker and a designer, Michelle from Mill on the Floss. And you know, we laughed and we laughed and um, being able to talk with friends, it really does brighten your day. Um, and doing this video brightens my day as well. Although you're not here physically in the room, you're here with me in my heart. So um, I hope you've enjoyed uh, today's natter. Um, if we lived in Scotland, we could say today's blether. In Scotland, a blether is a chat with a friend. Um, I'm going to go and walk the dogs now with my husband. Um, so until next time, stay safe, stay well. Bye-bye.